hi welcome to my channel today I'm going to be showing you guys a bunch of the fabric I currently have and just sharing with you guys some of the sewing ideas I have for fall and winter if this is the first time you're seeing one of my videos, my name's Rachel, thanks for stopping by. I like to make stuff here, and since I've primarily been sewing lately, you can expect to see a little bit of personal style chit chat here too. All right, you guys, so over the summer, I did do quite a bit of sewing. I have two videos that I'm working on right now, but they're taking a while to edit just because I've been super busy enjoying summer, but also we are in the process of packing up to move across the country again. So if you didn't know already, my husband, my daughter, and I all moved from Seattle to Boston two years ago so that my husband could pursue his MBA here. And he just graduated in June. So we've kind of spent the summer trying to figure out what our life looks like next. And we are going to be moving back to the West Coast, which we're super excited about. We are really sad to leave our friends and all the things that we love here in Boston, but looking forward to being a lot closer to both of our families. Definitely with a little one, I feel like that makes a huge difference. Being in Boston that does seem super far away now that we're actually here so we're really excited for that but it's definitely a lot of work to pack and just figure out what all of that looks like so I really wanted to make this video for you guys before we pack up and move because I'm starting to pack up my fabric and I know that I'm not gonna really have a ton of time to sew in between now and moving hi okay so we live in San Francisco now okay so I was filming this video in September and now it's New Year's Day. Um, it feels really good to be finally settled in a new place. Right after I filmed this video, I thought I was gonna be able to do a few sewing projects um, and I did, but I think only a couple of them were with the fabrics that I used in this video. So I really haven't made that much with the fabric in this video. However, I do still plan on doing that because here in San Francisco, a lot of these project ideas are still fitting for most seasons anyway. It doesn't get super, super hot here. And it also doesn't get super cold here, which I'm really excited about it's a beautiful day and it's January and we went on a really nice walk earlier so in between living in Boston and San Francisco we did spend some time on the Oregon coast which was really really fun and then we went and stayed with some family in Southern California and then by the time we actually moved into a place here in San Francisco it was November so it was kind of a long process of moving but it was really nice to just be able to spend some time as a family together and kind of take our time looking for a place to live but now I'm really itching to do some sewing so I will will be using the fabrics in this video. If I have done any of the projects mentioned in this video, I will make sure to insert a clip of me wearing whatever I made. Now I did make a few things before we moved and they were all for my daughter. So I made her a few new pairs of leggings just based on a pair of leggings she already has. It's really hard for me to find leggings that fit her just right. And there's this one style that fits her just right, but they don't come in the most exciting colors and patterns. So I actually used one of the pairs she already has. I completely tore it apart and I used it as a pattern and made her a few new pairs of leggings. And then I also also made her a few shirts to match her new leggings and I use this pattern right here I use some lighter weight knit fabrics and then more recently I used like a heavyweight fleece and they both worked really well with this pattern I did make it three maybe three and a half inches longer on the bottom, just so it was a little bit more oversized on my daughter. My daughter is pretty tall for her age, so I really like her shirts to be a little bit longer. She gets a lot more wear out of them. The first shirt that I used with this pattern already is too short on her, so she doesn't wear it anymore. But the other, I think three, all of those are longer and she's still wearing them now. So I'll make sure to insert a couple pictures right here of her wearing all the cute outfits I made for her. She's worn them so much. And another nice thing about these outfits is a lot of the colors kind of go together, so she's able to mix and match. But yes, I've received a few comments from you guys asking if I was still planning on making videos or if I was coming back. And yes, I am. I just really did not prioritize making videos for the past few months. I thought that I was going to, and then, you know, things got going and I just didn't. <laughs> so I'm back. I'm really excited to do more sewing and I'm really excited to share it with you guys. So here's the rest of the video. Before I start, I do want to tell you guys just a couple goals that I have for this next year in sewing. Okay, so the first thing, when we move and we start getting settled in, I really would like to figure out a way to creatively display and store my fabric. Because where we currently live, I have been storing my fabric in like drawers, I have a trunk full of fabric, I have like some baskets full of fabric, and I feel like since I don't actually see all of my fabric at once, when I want to sew something, I'm more inspired by seeing new fabrics and buying those new fabrics or seeing a pattern that I want to use and thinking about a fabric that I would like to use for that pattern. And then the next place we live, I would really like to be inspired by the fabrics that I see because now that I'm packing up my fabric, I'm seeing all the fabrics that I forgot that I had 
and I'm having all sorts of ideas. So I definitely want to figure out a way where I can see all of my fabric at once whenever I'm thinking about making something. Okay, so the next goal of mine, I will be talking about this in another one of my videos about some of my summer clothes that I made, but I really want to stop buying clothes this year unless it's something that I am not capable of making myself. So things that fall into that category are like undergarments, active wear, outerwear, weather gear, things that require some level of technology or like fabrics that I don't know how to use. Another one is jeans. I am not super confident in making pants at this point. I do really want to get more confident within the next year making pants and just like getting the fit right. And then hopefully by next year, I'll be able to make my own jeans. But for now, I will still be buying jeans over the next year. It's not like something that I buy regularly anyway. So maybe at some point this year, I'll be buying like another pair of jeans, but it's not like I need like six new pairs of jeans every year. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you guys the fabric that I have. I'll start with some fabric that I just got recently. And these are like definitely folly wintery fabrics that I actually have plans for. So here they are. So this one looks familiar because I'm wearing this fabric already. I just made this using this free pattern. I really like how this turned out. It's just made out of this sweater knit material. Um, it's stretchy this way. So that's why I made it go vertically, horizontally. <laughs> I made it go horizontally because I wanted this funnel neck part to match this part and then I also wanted kind of contrasting directions in the sleeves and I do feel like with this fabric it hems a lot nicer if you're going the horizontal way. So I think if I were to make it vertical this would just be a little bit more challenging and I just wanted this to be like an easy to put together turtleneck. And one alteration that I did make is I made this wider just because this fabric doesn't have quite as much stretch as the fabric that is suggested to be used for this in the pattern. So um, if I only used the amount that was suggested, it wouldn't have fit over my head. So it is a little bit more of like a cowl turtleneck, which I actually really like. I feel like for this time of the year, I think if I were to wear like a turtle turtleneck, I would be way too hot. And I feel like even though this is still a turtleneck, it's a little bit more bearable at this time of the year. So here in Boston, it's definitely not feeling like fall quite yet. I haven't worn this outside today. Fortunately, we have air conditioning where I live, so I'm wearing it for this video because I wanted to wear something kind of folly and be kind of festive and wear one of the fabrics that I have. Anyway, I do really love this fabric so far. It feels just really cozy. It's like a little bit fuzzy. I have plenty of this because I'm gonna make some matching lounge pants to match this sweater. And then I'm also going to make my daughter a matching set too. So I'm gonna make her a little turtleneck and some wide leg cozy lounge pants out of this too. So yeah, I think I have like three yards of this left. This used one and a half yards. And I'm going to be using this pattern again with this fabric. So this is just like a, I think this is like a faux cashmere. It's like stretchy and really soft and kind of thick. And it's just this nice creamy color. It's not like an ivory. It's not like a yellow tone creamy color. It's just like a really neutral off white. And it's nice and soft and fuzzy and really stretchy. And I think, let's see, I think I have two and a half yards of this because I wanna make one of these and then if I have more left, it'd be nice if I could make like a pair of shorts or a pair of pants or even just another sweater for my daughter too. So we might have a couple matching outfits, which always makes me happy. Okay, and then moving on, I got this uh, flannel fabric for my husband. Is this flannel? It's woven. I don't really know what makes a flannel a flannel, but it's this soft, woven material and it's just in these really beautiful colors so it's got some like warmer brown and some tan and a little bit of like a cooler gray in it and I got him this because we just celebrated our seventh wedding anniversary and for like the traditional gifts this year it was wool and copper so I thought it would be really fun to make him just like a button-up cozy wool shirt and I'm going to be using this pattern right here I have used another pattern from this pattern shop on Etsy and if you saw one of my older videos you'll remember this shirt that I made for my husband and he is really tall and he has like some broadness in his shoulders but he's still pretty slim so it's usually a little bit tricky for him to find shirts that fit him just right and magically this pattern fit him perfectly without having to make any changes at all I think all I did was make I made the sleeves a little bit longer other than that I didn't have to change anything so I got this pattern right here from the same shop and I'm really excited to see how it turns out but since I've never used this pattern before, I did want to use something like this, just like a flannel, the first time I did it, so that at some point when I find some really cool, unique wool, I will be confident 
using that for this project. So yeah, I haven't figured out what buttons I'm going to use for this. I think it'd be really cool to match this gray color and use some gray buttons in this, but we'll see. Okay, and then when I was shopping for flannel for my husband, I found this and I decided that I needed a flannel too. So this is just a really classic plaid fabric. It has like an off-white background. It has some burgundy in it and some warm brown and some like pale yellow, little, little tiny bit of black in there if you look really closely. I wanna make myself an oversized flannel out of this using this pattern right here. So I have used this pattern before. I am making a video of me making like a matching linen set and I use this pattern for the top and it turned out really cute. I really love the proportions of this pattern. In a really interesting way, it is oversized on me, but without me looking like I'm drowning in the shirt. I feel like that's exactly what I want in an oversized garment, so I feel like like this will be perfect for this plaid. I still don't know what buttons I'm gonna be using for this. But I will show you the fabric that I used for that linen set and it looks like this. So this is just our old duvet cover. It's this perfect, just like flax linen color. We didn't really like it very much because I felt like this was too big for our duvet. So our duvet just kind of like floated around in it and then this would get bunched up. So we haven't used this in a long time. And since we're moving, I was going through stuff and figuring out what we're keeping, what we're trying to sell and what we're getting rid of, like donating. And I almost donated this. And then I was like, what am I doing? This is perfect. This is the perfect linen material. It's nice and soft and it has some drape to it. You can see I've already cut into it for that set. But yeah, I love this fabric, so I'm so glad that I kept it. I still have plenty more of it. I don't really know what I'm gonna use this for because I've already made myself a shirt and some pants out of this. And then I also made a really cute little outfit for my daughter too. This is what it looks like. I made her these cute little wide leg pants and this top. I'll definitely link the pants and the top pattern below. So the bottom of the shirt is actually just the half of the first tier of the dress. And then um, I made cover buttons for the back of it. So that was the first time I ever used cover buttons before. And it was a lot easier than I expected it to be. It is a little bit tricky to use the little device that the pack comes with, but I thought that I was gonna need like some special tools and stuff. You don't need anything special. You can just get the little pack and it has everything you need in it. So yeah, I'll definitely be making cover buttons again for other things in the future. And for that video, it is one that I filmed, I don't know, like a month ago? Was it a month ago? Two, two or three weeks? three weeks ago? I don't know. I shot it a while ago. I am still putting that together and hopefully I will get that posted at some point in like the next month or two. I know that's a little bit late, but this summer was a blur. So <laughs> I'll get that posted. So I did want to show you guys a couple fabrics that I've had since last year around the same time but that I do plan on using soon. So I got this fabric last summer, not this past summer but the summer before. I got this in Paris and it's just this really nice, I think this is rayon, it's really lightweight and it has these beautiful colors in it like a warmer green and um, pink and a little bit of like a rest in it too. I've only used this like a tiny bit of this because I made my daughter a little bunny and I made a little tiny dress for it But I really want to make my daughter a little dress out of this too So she can match her little bunny and she is really into like anything floral anything with ruffles anything with Unicorns or anything like that. So I do really want to make her like a frilly fun fall dress I think with like some puffy sleeves or something out of this and then if there's any more left for me I would like to make myself just like a tank top or something for like layering under a jacket or something. I'll definitely be using that soon. I do also plan on making my daughter a little capsule wardrobe for like fall and winter, so I'll be sure to film that. I have made her a few things already that will kind of like fit into that whole little capsule too, but at some point I will be filming like making a bunch of stuff for her and this will be one of those things, so keep your eyes peeled for that. Okay, next is this faux leather. So I got this last year in like September or something and I really wanted to make a leather skirt for myself. At the time I knew that it was going to be a little bit tricky and I was still trying to figure out like how confident I was making a leather skirt just because once you poke a hole in this 
then it's there forever. So I was a little bit nervous going into it. So I never made that skirt. And this winter, I will make the skirt. I am determined to figure out how to use like a vinyl needle and I just need to get over it. I mean, I will be able to replace this fabric. If I mess this up, it's not like this is going to be irreplaceable. There are a couple fabrics that I have that I know I will never be able to find again. This is not one of them. So I just need to get over it. I need to cut into this. I need to try to make a skirt out of this. I think I will be using this pattern unless I see something before then that I like more. All right, and then this is another fabric that was in my video last fall. Um, and this is just this really pretty tweed. It is black and it also has some olive green and some multicolored speckles and some brown and a little tiny bit of white in it. I'm going to make a little pinafore dress out of this. So last year I made a pinafore dress out of this and this is just like another really pretty tweed. And I wore this dress so much. It was just such an easy thing to throw over some tights and some boots and a turtleneck and feel a little bit fancy in, but it's also super, super comfortable. So this is the pinafore dress that I made last year. And that is the same pattern that I'll probably use for this too. It is a super, super easy pattern to follow. This is the pattern. But yeah, it'll just be something that I end up wearing a lot, I'm sure, especially in these colors. I do still wear a lot of black, even though I am in autumn, but this does have some of the autumn colors in it too. So I feel like it's a good mixture of two of the things that I really like. And then I'm sure I'm gonna have extra of this and I obviously have extra of this too. So I'll probably end up trying to make something cute for my daughter too. Probably like just matching pinafore dresses with mine. Those are super easy to make. So that is the tweed that I have. So I also got this silk. I got this from the thrift store and I think it's silk. It's like crunchy like silk, it burns like silk. I was gonna use this this summer because I was really into making the Paradise Patterns Helen dress. I made three of these and I thought it would be really beautiful in this, but I do think this is a little bit too sheer to just make a simple dress out of. I think if I made a dress out of it, it, it would need some like gathers or something. But I think what I'm gonna do is I wanna make like an oversized blouse out of this or like a gathered blouse or something. I really love this color and um, it just feels really nice and lightweight so I feel like for winter having like a long sleeve blouse that isn't really warm is nice for like indoor things just because you know some people really bump their heat so I feel like I want to find more things that like look and feel wintry but aren't super cozy you know what I mean so I think this would be perfect for that okay and the next is one of my very favorite fabrics I've ever had um, and I got this last year so you guys might have already seen this before but I actually have plans for this now this is this beautiful, perfect wool fabric that I got in the LA Fabric District with my mother-in-law last winter, so around Christmas time. And it just has like the most beautiful colors in it. I know some of these are like more summer colors, but there are some autumn colors in here too. And the summer colors that are in this, I feel like are summer colors that I can borrow. Like this color right here is like a really pretty color and is pretty good on me. I feel like my eyeballs like match this fabric pretty well but I have been really nervous to cut into this. And in the past, I was just trying to figure out like exactly what I wanted to do with this. And then I decided that I want to make a jacket out of this. So this is two yards, but it is really, really wide. So I think I can make the long version of this Jamila jacket with this. Um, I feel like it would be a really nice jacket for, like I, I think that I could dress it up or I could wear it really casually. Whatever I use this for, I want to wear it all the time so I feel like this is a perfect pattern that can be styled like lots of different ways but before I cut into this I am going to use so I have a ton of denim I think I had like a super awesome coupon at Joann's one time or something and I got like five yards of denim just because I figured I would eventually go through all of it like over the next few years so I have a whole bunch of this and I really want to make the Jamila jacket in this denim it is really bright blue at first but it does fade beautifully into like a nice mellow medium wash and I do have I'll show you guys a little bit later but I do have a bag that I made out of this and so I know that that's what the jacket will look like after a few washes and stuff. But yeah, I got this idea because I was looking through Pinterest and I was suggested like a denim jacket that looked almost identical to the Jamila jacket pattern and it was in denim and it was really cute. And so I'm going to make one of those and then these are the little buttons I'm gonna use for it. So these are just like, oh, these are just little jeans buttons. I got them in these like, I don't know, tarnished, what do you call this? I don't know. It's this gold color, but it's like a, it's, oops. <laughs> it's 
like a brass button and it's kind of like the, what do they call this, burnish? So they're not super shiny, but they are like a more gold tone, like a warm tone button. So I'm gonna be using those for the buttons that go down the front. And for this one, I might do cover buttons if I can, if this is thin enough, I think this might be too thick for cover buttons, but I'm gonna do some experimenting and see if I can do cover buttons for this. If I can't, then I will find something else. But maybe, I mean, maybe jeans buttons would be cute on this too, we'll see. Okay, what's next? Okay, so next is this fabric that I got this summer. I just got this on sale when I saw it. I just thought it was too cute. I don't really know what I'm gonna use this for. Over the summer, I thought about using it for like a dress or for a set or something. I don't have enough of it to make a set. I might just save this for next summer, but it has like these beautiful colors in it. I don't know, it's kind of a more of a summery print. So maybe I'll make another Howland dress out of this. Even for winter, I feel like I can make a Howland dress out of this and like layer with it and stuff. But yeah, it's just this really nice cotton and it has this cute like retro hair or apple. What do you think this is? Comment below what you think these fruits are. They look like this. They're very cute. I had to show you guys that even if I don't use it until next summer. It's like one of my favorite fabrics I have right now. Moving on, I'm gonna show you guys a couple things that I'm going to like upcycle, I guess. So like I said before, going through all of our stuff and figuring out what we're donating, what we're keeping. Um, I did find a few things that I was about to get rid of. So first is this bodycon dress. So it's just this rib knit material. This is what the whole dress looks like. It's like a midi bodycon dress. And I wore this a lot when I was pregnant. Um, it isn't a maternity dress. So I think when I bought it, I was thinking like this works for me while I'm pregnant and I'll for sure wear this when I'm not pregnant again. One interesting thing is that I loved wearing bodycon things when I was pregnant, but now that I'm no longer pregnant, I feel like bodycon doesn't really do much for my body. So I don't feel super like myself in this normally. And I don't know, like I could save this for like layering or something, but I just, I think that I would wear it a lot more if it were in like a turtleneck or something. So I might make a turtleneck for myself out of this. I might make my daughter some leggings out of this or something, but either way, I just didn't want to get rid of this dress because I love this color. This is absolutely like one of my very favorite colors, not just to wear, but like in general to look at. Like I want everything. I want to like paint a room this color. It is just the perfect olive green, like warm, warm olive green color. I will be using this for something. And then another thing that I almost got rid of, I love these pants so much. These are just, I got these at Costco. I got these at Costco. Um, right after I had my daughter and they were just like the best drawstring pants. They were, they're kind of like medium rise. So I think postpartum, um, I still wasn't wanting to wear like high rise things yet. So I feel like this was perfect for that period of time and beyond. I wore these so much that I, um, got like a hole in the crotch and I also have a hole in the butt too and I could definitely fix them and continue wearing them but now that I am like three years out from having a baby I really just don't love low or medium rise on myself so I don't really reach for these anymore but this is a really nice material and I feel like it would be really cute if I made my daughter some joggers out of these joggers and I could also just like use the same drawstring. I'd probably have to cut it and like sew it up a little bit, but I like this fabric, so I'll probably make my daughter some cute pants out of this. And then another cute pair of pants out of these pants of my husband's. So these are just some like khaki pocket pants, but if this khaki material is like really soft and stretchy, so I feel like these could make some really comfy joggers that are also pretty durable for my daughter. Okay, so next is this rib knit. It's just like a, an orange, like a burnt orange color. I love this color so much. This is definitely one of my favorite colors to wear um, because yeah, I am an autumn. So this like suits me pretty well, but also it just makes me really happy. I just love this color. I think I have two yards of this. I really want to make myself a turtleneck. Maybe like a lettuce hem turtleneck would be really cute in this. Um, and then I also want to make my daughter just like a little matching set, like leggings and like a fitted turtleneck or something. That's something she could definitely wear under a pinafore dress or like with like a flannel or a jacket or something over top. And I think that would be really cute. And it's also just really soft. So I think she'd be really cozy in this too. I'll be making a bunch of those. And then uh, this is one of the other fabrics that I'm going to be using for a little set for her too. So this was a remnant. It was 50% off the regular price. So um, I really like this fabric. This is just some of the brushed jersey from Joann's. They have a lot of different colors of this, but I really like this color. I thought it was really pretty. It's not like one of my colors. Um, this is definitely more of like a summer color, but 
it is muted i guess i could wear still wear this color but i will probably make my daughter something out of this first and if i have a little bit left maybe i'll make myself a little like sports bra or something out of it we'll see okay and then this is really fun so i took my daughter to the fabric store and i let her pick whatever knit fabric she wanted this was like when i first decided i was going to make her these leggings and tank top sets but i let her pick out whatever jersey fabric she wanted and we were like in the pattern section and she picked out this fabric so this is just super cute it has little unicorns all over it there is glitter which i was a little bit nervous about but if i rub it really hard it doesn't transfer so that was like my one my one rule i was like we cannot get glittery fabric that sheds glitter everywhere but these are glittery and they magically don't shed. So um, it's just these unicorns and some flowers and it has this blue background. She really loves uh, blue right now. So she says that her favorite colors are blue and pink and she loves unicorns. So I feel like this is just like her in some fabric. I have like quite a bit of it. So, and then it's like double that width. So I'm gonna be making her some leggings, a turtleneck and then whatever else I can squeeze out of this. Okay, and next, is this fabric so um this is another fabric that i've had for a while and i finally am going to use this this is probably one of the first projects i'm going to work on once we get settled in our new place so this is just some really cozy knit fabric it's kind of heathered and it's got this like beautiful orangey i don't know this is like a terracotta color but it has these little like gray fuzzies in it too um but yeah this is just like a really stretchy kind of like it's thin but it's like has some like heavy springiness to it, I guess. But I feel like I want a lounge set in this. So I'm going to be making a pair of lounge pants and then a top of some sort. I think I might end up doing it in this because this is something that I could wear like out and about too. I don't feel like it just looks like pajamas either. Or I could use this pattern like I've used before and make kind of like a wrap top out of it. But yeah, I'm definitely going to be using this. This is something that I thought I was going to use last winter and I never got around to it because I didn't really know exactly what I wanted to do yet. And I wasn't super confident with knits yet, but over the summer, which you'll see, I used a ton of knit fabrics. So I feel like I'm finally at a place where I can use this and not be afraid of ruining it right away. Okay, the next one, this is the last fabric that I have and I don't really think this qualifies as a fabric because it is this piece of leather. So um, I've had this for a long time. I got this at the discount fabric store and this is just like a nice thin piece of brown leather. I should probably condition it because it's feeling a little bit dry, but I'm gonna show you something really quick, one second. Okay, so I have used this pattern like a million times already, four times, five times actually, no, six times, seven times. I've used this seven times. I've made this as a gift for a few people, but um, this is the banana bag by Tropical Research. This is what the pattern looks like. I love this pattern. So I have added like hardware to mine. There are so many ways that you can customize this pattern and the zippers that I've used on these other ones. So I have this one that I made for my husband that I basically have stolen from him. I use it all the time. Um, then I have this one, just this linen. And then I have this denim one, and this is the same denim that I showed you earlier, and it's worn to this like really nice medium blue denim. And then I got a black one too. So I just made this black one, and I'm really glad that I finally did, because I, I wouldn't have used the black one much in the summer, but I'm sure I'll use it in like the fall and winter quite a bit. But now that I've done these so many times, I feel like I'm finally confident enough to use this leather. I really want to make a leather version of this too. Maybe I could do... Maybe I could do a leather version out of this black. Where did I put it? I don't even know where it is. But that black faux leather, I should make a black leather version of it because that's a really soft fabric. Maybe I'll do that and then I'll do this because this is real leather and I really don't want to ruin that. I think that this, it's finally time to use this though and it's nice and lightweight. I do have like a thicker green leather that I really love and I would love to make a banana bag out of that but I think that it would get stuck in my machine and I don't think my machine could get through like three layers of that, but I do think my machine could get through three layers of this. So yeah, I'm going to make a banana bag out of this and I feel like that would be, I'd feel pretty accomplished if I could do that. Um, oh, but I did want to show you guys while I was talking about the banana bags, I got ahead of myself. I really love 
these zippers. So these are YKK zippers and this is called the donut pole. Um, and I have ordered a couple different packs of these zippers just from Amazon. I'm sure you can get them lots of different places. I feel like for these bags, I wanted something that dangled a little bit, but I couldn't really find zippers that I liked. It looked like the, I really wanted to find one of those rings. You know what I mean? I couldn't really find those and I got a little bit impatient and I got these and I was like, well, I hope that they do the trick. And I feel like it's perfect. It's nothing that's like too extreme or loud. And also these zippers are just so smooth. I love how smooth these zippers zip and unzip. I know YKK has like a good reputation for that. So I'm really glad that I use those because I have them in this like natural color and then I have them in black too. And I've used them for almost every one of these bags that I've made except for this one, just because I wanted this to match the hardware and the hardware is like this more burnished brass. So I wanted this to match it. And this is just, this is also a YKK zipper and it's really nice. I got this out of like a bin on the side of the road in the LA fabric district. Okay, so that is all of the fabric that I currently have plans for for fall and winter. I do still have other fabrics too that I just don't really have ideas for at the moment, but I'm sure I will end up using those at some point over the next few months too. But yeah, I just think these videos are kind of fun and I always like to see what ideas other people have too. So if you have any ideas about like what I should do with some of these fabrics or if you have any patterns that you really love and you recommend to people, leave those down in the comments because I just feel like that is one of my favorite things about starting a YouTube channel, receiving advice and feedback from you guys and just like suggestions. I've heard of a few really good pattern shops through the comments on my videos. If you have any ideas, please leave those down below. I would love to hear them. And thank you so much for watching this whole video. I know this one is a little bit long, so I appreciate you sticking around. Like I said, these next few months are going to be a little bit chaotic. I am so excited to get settled in and start using some of these fabrics and making some cozy things. So I'll make sure to share those things with you guys once I get all set up and start filming again. Okay, so if you have not subscribed to my channel yet, please consider doing that. And if you like this video, like this video. And if you didn't like this video, I hope you like the next one. All right, well, I hope you guys are having a great day and I will see you later. Bye.